Today we're talking about integrations, specifically REST APIs and how to use them in Mendix. Starting off, we're going to take a look at setting up and publishing a REST API and then how to consume one. Let's get started. The quickest and easiest way to publish a REST API is to select the entity from the domain model, right click it and choose to expose it as a REST API. After selecting a key attribute and the operations the API should support, Studio Pro will automatically generate the service for you, creating any required mappings and microflows needed. You can of course do all of this by yourself without generating anything, creating from scratch for those who need custom configurations and control over the logic and data exposed by your application. Whether you generate or not, everything is fully customizable, so you can handle every scenario you might encounter quickly. After deploying your app, you can access the Swagger for your exposed service by clicking the blue link next to location. If you have security enabled, your API will require credentials and a session by default before it will allow access to the endpoint. You can disable this if needed and configure custom authentication instead, creating a microflow to handle security for the API. This microflow will receive parameters from the API either as header values or query strings. So you can use them to validate issued secret keys for the API or whatever other security check you want to implement. If your API will be accessed by systems from other servers, you will need to enable cross-origin resource sharing, known as cores. By enabling cores, you can specify which servers are allowed to access your service. After enabling, you will be prompted to select a constant. You can define which sites have access by a comma separated list contained in that constant. If you would simply like to allow all servers access and your API does not require authentication, you can use an asterisk as the constant value. That's just about everything to know about publishing a REST API. Now we can talk about how to consume one. To consume a REST API, simply right click in your project explorer and choose to add a consumed REST service. Next, we need to set the base URL for the service. This is the endpoint for the service without any methods attached. Next, if the service requires a username and password, click on authentication method, right where it says no authentication, and change it to basic. Then provide the credentials in the pop-up. You will need to create and provide the credentials as constant values in your application. Moving on, we can choose the method type, which can be get, post, at, put, and delete. If you select a method which requires a body for the request, you can enter a JSON structure, which will be automatically mapped to a non-persistable entity in the domain model. You can include parameters in your request on the parameters tab. You will be able to pass these values into the request when using the API in a microflow. Each parameter requires a name and an optional test value. Any headers required for the service can be configured on the last tab. By default, some headers will be added for accept and content type. You can edit or remove these. And if you want to add more, simply select to add a header and then select from the dropdown. Once you have everything you need configured, you can hit the send button at the top to test out the API even when your app isn't running. If you have a successful request, Studio Pro will automatically save and map the response from that service and use it to create the response structure. If you are happy with all of the configurations, you can click save and apply the changes. All that's left is to create a microflow to invoke the service and pass in any required parameters. In any microflow, look for the send rest request in the toolbox and add it to the flow. Select the consumed rest service we configured moments ago and then pass in any value the API requires as parameters. The action will return the root of the domain model structure created to store the data and you can use and access this as you wish, displaying it in pages or performing calculations in microflows. Alternatively, you can also use the call rest service action to consume a REST API. This method requires all the same configurations as the previous, but allows more options for the advanced user at the trade-off of requiring more configuration and less reusability. Whichever method you like best, at the end of the day, 
they accomplish similar outcomes and it's up to you on which to use. To learn more about how REST APIs work in Mendix, head to our documentation pages for more information. In the next video, I'll be talking about OData and Mendix Connect. Until then, remember to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mocky and this is Hello Mendix.